Yippee Kaye, movie lovers, it's Jan here, and in this video I'm revealing 10 characters Pixar cut from Incredibles 2 who you might wish had been included in the movie. If you're joining me for the first time, be sure to tap the bell to get my new videos, and also leave a comment about the movie for a chance to win an awesome Funko Pop. Spoilers ahead, so take care if you've not seen the film, or add this video to your watch later playlist. Although we never saw her and only briefly heard her voice, Frozone's wife Honey was a huge hit with fans in the first movie, so much so that Pixar used her only moment in the sequel to promote the film in the trailer. Where you going ASAP? You better be back ASAP! Sadly, that's about as much as fans got of Honey in Incredibles 2, but we could have had more, as she very nearly made it on screen. The filmmakers said they not only created a design for Honey, but they also initially included her in the movie's opening sequence. Unfortunately, the scene was scrapped as writer-director Brad Bird felt it didn't fit and the movie was already too packed. So once again, we only got to hear Honey's voice in the sequel, which Bird believes is funnier. It's a real shame that Honey didn't get to make her on-screen debut, as I know many Pixar fans were hoping she'd make an appearance. The storyboard of Honey's deleted cameo will be on the Blu-ray, and her design was reused in the movie for one of the many supers assembled on the yacht at the end. Look for the character with pink hair, bluish coloured suit and long gloves, plus goggles. When Edna Mode discovers that Elastigirl's new super suit was created by a designer called Alexander Galbaki, she's absolutely furious. Elastigirl's super suit is by Galbaki? Explain yourself! Now Galbaki only gets a name check in the final film, but originally Edna's rival super suit designer was actually going to appear on screen in a suit fitting scene with Elastigirl. Galbaki's character was meant to deliberately contrast with Edna, as his designs were all about showing off and drawing attention to him as a designer rather than focusing on the needs of the supers he's designing for. And as if that wasn't enough to get Edna's blood boiling, his designs even broke her golden rule. No capes! Giving Elastigirl a cape she clearly didn't like or need. And some early designs of Helen riding the Elasticycle show her wearing a cape at the same time. Wearing capes while close to incredibly fast spinning objects is clearly something that's very dangerous, as we saw in the first movie. A character that many fans would have liked to have seen return for the sequel was Kari the Babysitter. Kari's role from the first movie was expanded when she featured in the short film Jack-Jack Attack, which showed her discovering Baby Pa's superpowers and then having her memory wiped by Rick Dicker. And the filmmakers appear to have had a brief cameo in mind for her in the sequel, as concept art of Kari and her parents appears in the Art of Incredibles 2 hardback book. In an earlier version of the movie, Winston Dever didn't have a sister. Instead, he had a brother called Nelson, who was the original villain. As the story progressed, though, Brad Bird decided the villain would actually work better as a female character. So the decision was made to scrap Winston's brother and instead introduce a sister called Evelyn. And as a bonus, the team found they were able to make the relationship between Evelyn and Helen stronger and more interesting than they were with Nelson and Elastigirl. Nelson's design wasn't totally lost, though, and he was reused as the wannabe super Helectrix. And before Helectrix, there was originally a female version of this lightning-powered super called Shelectric. Shelectric's design ended up being used for Evelyn, who, as I mentioned, was made the main villain for the movie. While we do get lots of new super-powered characters in the movie, even more supers were designed for the film but didn't make the final cut. For example, Brad Bird mentioned a character called Overthink, who was originally going to be a bigger part of the film, but ended up only appearing very briefly with the international supers at the end of the movie, and who was never named. According to Bird, his power was incredible mental energy, but he takes his time to consider every single thing, and usually misses his opportunity to correct whatever the problem was, because there's always one more angle to explore. The whole idea of an overthinking superpower seems a bit strange, as it sounds less of a superpower and more of a chronic weakness. I can see the humorous potential, but it sounds like the character might have been a bit too complicated to get across on screen. Another secondary superhero that appears in the outtake section of the Art of the Incredibles 2 book is Cosmosis. Judging from his name and the many celestial designs considered for his super suit, I'd say he was probably going to have various powers of cosmic manipulation. Cosmic powers can endow users with powerful abilities such as manipulating matter across space and time, and creating force fields or portals between locations and dimensions. Cosmosis could have been on a par with extremely powerful superheroes like Captain Marvel and Jean Grey's Phoenix Force. If Cosmosis was only meant to be a secondary superhero or a wannabe super like Void and her crew, then I think he was probably cut from the movie because he might have been too formidable an opponent for the Incredibles family, and even possibly the extremely overpowered Jack-Jack. 
the filmmakers had yet more ideas for supers they hoped to introduce in the sequel. There was Berserkly, who reminds me a bit of Batman villain Poison Ivy with the green mask and leaf-like cape behind her, and her name suggests she might have had some wild or out-of-control powers. Shock and Aura are a pair of supers and their name and her style suggests they have some kind of electrical or lightning powers. The purplish colours in their hair and glasses made me think of the Wonder Twins from Super Friends, however they don't share similar powers with that DC duo. The deleted trio Mega Man and Co seem to be the least developed of the supers design-wise and look like they're wearing homemade costumes, so it's possible they were going to be used more for comic effect than any real threat to the Incredibles. Now, do you wish any of these characters had appeared in the movie? Be sure to comment and subscribe for a chance to win a cool Incredibles Funko Pop. Tap left to check out 10 awesome deleted scenes from the movie, and tap right for my full Pixar playlist, including Easter eggs and all Jack-Jack's powers explained. Remember to tap the bell to get all my new videos as soon as I upload them, and if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Thanks for watching, and see you next time, yippee ki movie lovers!